We glorify you, Jesus. We magnify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, church, let's keep that worship going. Let's keep lifting up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name today, God. We exalt your name in this place, Lord. It's all about you this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah,
with him. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, God. Oh, Jesus, I'm thankful today for that day, and I'm thankful for the God that we know, and we know his name. We know his name. What's his name? What's his name? And that name, in that name is power, in that name is healing, in that name is salvation. If you need any of those things, if you need anything, worship with us. Call on that name. Call on that name and it'll happen. He is here today, church. If there is anything that you need, it is here in his name. Lost or saved, find me.
worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Well, let us worship our Redeemer, our salvation, our defender. When you go into those battles, he goes before you. That battle is won. You have victory in the name of Jesus. God the praise this morning. He's my redeemer. He is worthy of my praise today. Hallelujah. I praise your great name today, Lord. I lift my voice unto you. I give you thanks for all your wonderful blessings today, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. God is great. God is on time. God is a present help in the time of trouble. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Why don't you turn around and greet one another and tell each other, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Amen. You'll find your place. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're happy today to have Pastor Paca from Dallas, Texas with us. Amen. And he's going to be ministering for Brother Cap. We just want him to come and share a word with you and greet you. God bless you, Brother Paca. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's always the right place. I read the Bible today when I turned the Bible and God said, I'm the one who chose you. I'm so glad that he chose me. I'm so glad that my God is everywhere. Before, that, before I go too far, I'm not here to preach, just to encourage a little bit. I've been here last year at November, and this is my second time. I feel like home. I'm a pastor from Burma, and also we have a church in Dallas we call 
We are more UBC. So we love the name of UBC. So we just add Myanmar in front of it. So we all are united. And then we have, we have like five different languages, not dialects. Different languages among the church. So every time I preach, they have to translate for me. So I do have a translator, or I have to use two or three different languages. Which five not including the other tongue yet? So we have six or seven, yes, yes. but we all are together. Yes. The only reason because of Jesus Christ. Yes. I'm so glad the Bible said that the stone that yes. they have rejected, yes. what did it become? The cornerstone. Yes. That's why Apostle Paul said to the Gentiles, yes. you are built upon the foundation of a prophet and apostle. And Jesus Christ himself is the cornerstone. So we will not be moved. I will not be shaken, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to see everybody with diversity here. I'm so glad to see different people. Because Jesus is not just for America. It's not just for Burmese people. He is for the whole world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the reason for this season, right? That's why we are here. We're here to worship him. We are his people, the chosen one. So we are not going to stop worshiping him. I'd like to encourage everybody. We worship him forever until we live. Once again, thank you so much. And you know what? You all are my brother. I, I talked to Brother Cobb. I, I have a lot of the relatives in here. Different denomination, all other. You know what? I told him, doesn't matter who we are, what nationality we are. We serve the same God. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. You all are my brother and my sister. It's good, good to see you all, and God bless you. Amen. It's awesome when you can travel around the world and still have a family that believes, not just believes, but believes the truth. Amen. Praise God. And we're glad to have you with us. Amen. The, his superintendent has contacted me about coming to Burma in March and preaching at their general conference. And so, by the grace of God, I plan to go. Amen. So, pray for me that I'll be a blessing over there. Praise God. Amen. They assured me that the accommodations were a little bit better than India when I went. Amen. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Amen. I found out what a real mission field was. They picked me up at the airport, and we drove three days into the jungle, amen, on some pretty rough roads that they called roads that I wouldn't even call a road, amen, but God kept his hand upon us, and we're grateful for that, but I, the beautiful thing was after we got there, they were all gathered together, there was an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, we had something like 120 receive the Holy Ghost, Amen. People just laid out in the floor being slain in the spirit. It was awesome. Hallelujah. We have all this technology and we don't want to come to church when it's hot or when it's cold. Those folks were at church at 4 o'clock in the morning. And they prayed till about 8 o'clock and they started service at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Some of you already tired. Amen. I'll quit right there. Amen. But God is good, and God is on the throne. Aren't you glad you know him today? Praise God. Amen. We want to recognize a couple of people this morning. Sister Rose got baptized. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Come up, Sister Rose. We're so excited for you.
Amen. She came up, she said to me, she says, I was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I see the need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. So you're never too old to obey the commands of Christ. Amen. Praise God. Vanessa, where are you at? Uh, oh, that's right. Sister Jackie, this is your niece, I think, that got the Holy Ghost on Friend Day. Would you come up and receive her certificate for her? And I'll let you give it to her. We're happy that she was filled with the Spirit on Friend Day. Amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a round of applause. He's doing great things in our church. Amen. Sister Kamisha, come on up this morning. She recently attended our discipleship class and graduated and has become a general member. Amen. Happy for Kamisha today. Amen. God is awesome, is he not? Amen, amen. Sister Janelle is coming with our announcements. God bless her. Praise the Lord, church. I said praise the Lord, church. It is so great to be here with you on a Sunday morning. A special greeting as always to our online watchers. We're so glad to have you as part of this service. A couple of announcements for everyone. Today, directly after service, there will be a hospitality luncheon for all of the greeters and section captains. So please come to the large classroom over here on the right-hand side directly after service, right as soon as we're done. Um, go and fellowship, and there will be a training and a luncheon provided. Also, on Sunday, December 15th at 6 p.m., we are having our Christmas banquet. Today is the final day for you to purchase your ticket. Again, it is the final day for you to purchase your ticket. So please, if you're going to attend that, come out, give your money to Sister Bleedy. It's $40 for adults and $20 for children ages 5 to 10. Remember to do that directly after service. Also, on Thursday, December 19th at 7 p.m., we are having our carols by candlelight. This is the first time we've kind of had a sing-along, so please come out and be part of what God's going to do during that special service. We'll be lighting candles and just sharing time together. Also, mark your calendar, Sunday, December 22nd, we're having our Christmas service. Start spreading the word to friends and family, and also our watch night service will be Tuesday, December 31st, starting at 10 p.m. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Just to follow up on what Janelle just said, today is your final day for purchase. I will not be available next Sunday. We are, uh, please note also that the dinner is at a different place. We always used to go into the hotel over there off of Swaxo Lake, but it's at Rider Wood this year. We have a full serving. Last year we only had one entree. This year we have two. We have salmon, we have chicken, we have, I mean, it's full course. So please, please, make your payments today. We already uh, reserved the space for 100 people. I hate to say how many I have right now. It's embarrassing. It's under 30. But I know there are a few people here who are going to pay today. All of you are going to pay today. And we'll all be there to fellowship on Sunday. So that's what I have to say. So please, please, note. The direction is, the, the venue is a different place this year. Please make your payment. I'll be outside after church. Don't hand me any money in church. I'll be outside after church to receive all your money. As usual. She's after all your money. So you can't accuse me of being after all your money anymore. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We want you all to come to our Christmas banquet. It's always a great time of fun and fellowship. Amen. And uh, so please see her. Today, again, is the last day for you to buy. Because every year, some of you come to us and on the day of the banquet. And we can't help you because we have to turn a number in to them. And they only cook for that number. So uh, if you don't tell us today... Amen. The rapture is going to take place. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Also, we're going to prepare for our offering and 
up here this morning I have our Christmas for Christ envelopes amen and this is a tradition in our church that we receive an offering for Christmas for Christ this money does not stay in our local church it goes to build brand new churches all across North America so every dollar that you put in an envelope will go to help build a church in North America and, a, and brother uh, uh, <clears throat> Matthews he was just up in New York City amen and this weekend yesterday matter of fact with a home missionary trying to build a church in downtown Manhattan so amen now I can't tell you know it's expensive in Manhattan amen so we need money to spread the gospel. So you can't go, I can't go, but we can help somebody else. Amen. So that's what this is all about. There, It's uh, offering envelopes up to $100. Nobody will give more than $100. Amen. And as I like to say, you buy gifts for your kids. Christmas is all about Jesus. It's his birthday. So this is a way for you to give Jesus a birthday present. And I hope you will. We passed out envelopes to the kids in class this morning. Amen. 1 through 25, so you don't have to sweat that. Amen. But we want to teach our kids to give to the Lord. Amen. So I'm asking for every member of the family to pick up an envelope and give something to Christmas for Christ or give something to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because after all, he is the reason for the season. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me? You can pick one up as you bring your offering to the front. Let's pray over it. Father, we give you thanks today for all your wonderful blessings. We ask you, God, to bless all of our home missionaries today that are trying to establish churches and cities all across North America. We pray that you would encourage them and bless them and strengthen them. We ask you to take these offerings that we bring and give to you, oh Lord, hallelujah, for the furtherance of the gospel that many souls would be one. We just give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name and everybody say amen. Amen. Come and give to the Lord this morning. Your light broke through my night, restored exceeding joy. Your grace fell like the rain and made this death
how we overcome by worship, by praise, by lifting up our hands, by shouting unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm more than an overcomer. Good Christ Jesus, my Lord. Come on, somebody, give me some praise today. That's pretty weak. I said, give him some praise today. He said, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen. Free to worship. Free to praise. Free to magnify God. Free to lift up the name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. All right, I'm just going to stay right here a minute. Shake off that sleepy spirit today. Shake off that lazy spirit today. He said that everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. I will bless the Lord. I will praise the Lord. I will magnify the Lord. I will shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. For the Lord is great and he is greatly to be praised. Let everybody shout amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. The devil doesn't want you to worship. The devil wants you to feel tired and wore out. The devil wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your peace. But we have come into the house of the Lord today. Hallelujah. To lift up the mighty name, the awesome name, the glorious name, the powerful name, Jesus. And we are excited today because he has set us free. He has broke the chains of bondage. He has liberated us from death, hell, and the grave. And I've got a right to praise him today. Hallelujah. to praise him you were created to worship I'll say it again we were created to worship if we come to the house of worship and we don't worship we go home the same way we came God doesn't want you going home the same way you came he brought you into his house today he gave you strength and health to be here. He's endued you with power from on high. Why? Because he wants you to worship him. He wants you to praise him. He wants you to magnify him. He wants his name to be lifted up. So if I come to the house of worship and I fail to worship, I go home with all my baggage. I go home the same way I came. But if I'll forget about everything and I'll get into that atmosphere of worship, hallelujah, you'll go home different than the way you came. Amen. Anybody want to go home different? Turn with me. Most of you can quote this to Psalms chapter 23. Amen. Psalms chapter 23. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. 
Anybody got trouble in your life today? He said he'll lead you beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, and thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If that's your prayer today, lift up your hands and magnify God with me. Hallelujah. I thank you today for your power, God. I thank you for your strength today. I thank you that you are my refuge. I thank you that you're my deliverer. I thank you that you're my peace giver. I thank you that you're the joy that in my heart, in my mind, in my soul today, I just worship you. I love you. And I thank you today for all your wonderful blessings. And I give you praise today, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody say, in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Amen. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I don't deserve him. But I'm glad that he's on my side. How about you? He tells me that in the middle of my struggles, in the middle of my walk, in the middle of, amen, turmoil and trials and tribulations of life. He said, he leads me beside the still waters. I don't know how you have felt, but there's been times in my life that I've been in dire situations. And if it wasn't for the presence of God in my life, and the reassurance of the word of God in my soul, I would be, like Paul said, of most men, most miserable. When the doctor tells you there is no more hope, we can lift our hands to the one who's breathed the breath of life into our bodies, and we can say, I've got hope today. Doctor, it's not over this morning. God is still able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that I think or ask. Praise God. Anybody got hope? Anybody got hope today? What's wrong with the rest of you? No hope? Well, you're in the right place. Amen. Is it so hard? Everybody put your hand up. Is that so hard to do? Everybody say amen. amen. Is that so hard to do? Come on now. We're in an apostolic church. We are not people that are down and out. We are not distressed. We are not beside ourselves. But we are full of the power of the Holy Ghost today. And as long as we've got Jesus, we've got everything that we need. Because I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ my Lord. No weapon formed against me shall prosper with every temptation. He said I'll make a way of escape. We've got a right to get excited hallelujah in the middle of my trials in the middle of my tribulations he leadeth me beside still waters he says peace be still to the storm that's raging in your life amen he's the peace giver he's the way maker He's the great I am. Isaiah said his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Aren't you glad you know who he is today? Somebody shout his name. 
All right, shout his name again. Jesus. Praise God. I don't know if I'm yelling, screaming what I'm doing up here because this ear is blocked up. I can't hear out of this ear. So you're just going to get what I got today. Amen. So if I'm a little loud, I'm just going to be a little bit loud. Amen. I'm not going to let the devil win today. Amen. I'm not going to, I feel like I'm talking to myself, but that's all right. I'm preaching at myself today. Amen. But I want you to know, amen, my, my title this morning is Hallelujah. Amen. Led by God. I want to be led by God. I want to be led by God. I want to go where he wants me to go. I want to do what he wants me to do. He said he leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know if that does anything for you, but when the troubles are in my life, I can say, Father, you said you would lead me beside still waters. Hallelujah. When the boat is rocking and the waves are rolling, you can say, peace. Be still, and everything is going to be all right. I have faith in you. I've got confidence in you. I believe that you will do what you said you will do. Amen. You've never failed me. You've never let me down. You've never let me drown. You've not let me die. Hallelujah. So why should I worry? And why should I fret what the devil tries to do? Hallelujah. If God be for me, who can be against me. I'm trying to speak some faith into somebody's soul this morning that you'll tell the devil that he's a liar because the Lord is on your side and the Lord is leading you and the Lord said I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you but I'll go with you all the way. Somebody give them a clap offering of praise. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. And even if I'm facing in death, I'll not fear the evil. For his rod and his staff, they do comfort me. Hallelujah. I've preached a few funerals in my life. But it's always a joy to preach one. Of a saint that has lived for God. Because we don't have to weep as others weep, Paul said. Hallelujah. Because we know where we're going. We know when they lay us in that grave, that's not our final resting place. Jesus said, there's a home prepared. Hallelujah. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Not just any old house, not, not any house comparable to what you're living in right now, hallelujah, but he's building some mansions in heaven, the streets are going to be paved with gold, eyes not seen and ears not heard, the things that God has prepared for his people. So what? I may live in a shack down here, but I'm going to live in a mansion over there. Somebody give him praise. And because I've got Jesus, the anointing or the Holy Ghost has been shed abroad in my heart and in my mind and in my soul. And I can say like David, my cup runneth over. My spirit is full today. I've got faith today because he lives in me. Hallelujah. He lives in you this morning. Hallelujah. If for no other reason, you ought to give God some praise today because Faith is alive in your heart. Jesus is alive in your heart. You've got the Holy Ghost. And as long as you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got resurrecting power. And you've got dominion. And you've got authority. And the anointing rolls over and over and over in your soul today.
My cup runneth over. So surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Not this kingdom. Not this house. But that house over there. I'm going to dwell in the presence of God forever. Woo. Where there's going to be no more sickness. Where there's going to be no more pain. Where there's going to be no more sorrow. Where there's going to be no more cancer. Where there's going to be no more disease. Where there's going to be no more heart attacks, if you will, this morning. I'm going to live and rule and reign with Christ through all eternity. Somebody realize today, this world is not your home. You're just passing through. The Lord is leading us through a temporal place, preparing us to go to an eternal place. I said, we know who we are. We know where we came from. And we know where we're going. All right. Don't get too excited over there. I think you all need to be reminded every now and then, this world's not your home. You know, it's Christmas time, and you're going to go out there and buy all them presents and wear yourself out shopping and buy a bunch of junk that they don't even appreciate. Hello. <laughs> if they're like my kids, they open their gifts on Christmas morning, and they say, okay, that's neat. Push that aside. What's next? Get that. Push that aside. What's next? And if, if you're not careful, they're ungrateful for what you've given them. And if they didn't get that special thing that they thought they deserved, then they get a bad attitude. And I just want to. Amen. I don't know how I got on that, but anyway, praise God. I want to be led of God. I want to be directed of God. I want to appreciate what he's doing for me right now. Because I'm going to an eternal home. Hallelujah. I said I'm going to an eternal home. Amen. The reason we're in the house of the Lord this morning is not just to be saved down here. We're going to be saved for eternity. We're going to live and we're going to rule and we're going to reign for, with Christ through all eternity. Hallelujah. Praise God. Being led by God. How many of you want to be led by God? Yeah. Amen. In Luke, the second chapter, I'll pay attention to verse 27. It tells us the story of Simeon when he was looking for the Christ child to come. And the Bible says, and he came by the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. Amen. When Simeon saw Jesus, or the promised child, amen. Notice it said he came to the temple by the spirit. What spirit? The spirit of God. The Spirit led Simeon into the temple that he might see Jesus. And when he saw Jesus, he glorified God. He gave God praise because now he had seen the salvation of God. He had seen who Isaiah had prophesied about. He had seen who Joel had prophesied about. That there was one who was going to be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. 
But when Simeon saw Jesus, he magnified God because he saw the salvation. And we know today that Jesus said, I have come, hallelujah, amen, to bring life and to bring it abundantly, amen. He had come to set the captive free. He has come to bring deliverance to those that are in bondage. He has come, hallelujah, to bring salvation to those that are lost. He said, I have come to seek and to save that which is lost. The mission of Christ, the purpose of Christ, the love of Christ was to come down out of glory and be wrapped in flesh in a, in a manger. And we beheld him and we saw him and he came because he he was on a mission, and that mission was that you and I might come to know him in the power of his resurrection. Love brought him out of glory to earth. I'll say it again. Love brought him out of glory to earth. And Simeon was waiting to see the salvation of God. And he believed that he would not die until he saw the salvation of God. But after he saw Jesus, he said, behold. I think he said, behold the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. He rejoiced. He magnified. He praised God because now he felt like he could die because God had kept his promise to him. Amen. What would have happened if Simeon hadn't have been sensitive to the Holy Ghost? What would have happened if Simeon had never gone to the temple that day? Perhaps this story would not even be in the Bible. But Simeon, sensitive to the things of God, heard the voice of the Lord and followed the leading of the Spirit. And the promise of God was fulfilled because he followed the leading of the Lord. Somebody didn't get that. The promise of of God was fulfilled because he followed the leading of the Lord. I'm trying to tell somebody this morning, if you want the promises of God to be fulfilled in your life, you've got to become sensitive to the will of God and the purpose of God, and you've got to follow the leading of the Lord. Lead me. In the paths of righteousness. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wherever you want me to go, God, I'll go. Yeah. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, I'll do. Because yeah. I yeah. must be in your presence. Yeah. Clap your hands to him. I want to give you another example found in Acts 16. Paul and Silas, they wanted to go into Asia and preach the gospel. Now, I may butcher some of these cities' names, and if you can pronounce them better than me, then so be it. Praise God. Amen. He says, now when they had gone through Phrygia, P-H-I-R-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-
but they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to go and preach the word to Asia. And notice, it goes on down to say, the Spirit suffered them not. The next verse, 7. The Spirit suffered them not. In other words, they wanted to go this way, but the Holy Ghost said, no, go over this way. Hallelujah. Paul, as you know, and Silas were great evangelists for the gospel. It was said of Paul that, and Silas that these are they that have turned the world upside down for the cause of Christ. They had great success and, and great revival amongst the Gentile nations. But remember, we've been studying the book of Romans on Thursday night. Paul kept wanting to go back to the Romans because he himself, hallelujah, was invested in the, in, in, or, or not the Romans, but the Jews. Amen. He wanted to see the Jews saved. The book of Romans over and over and over shows us how desperately Paul wanted to see the Jews saved. He was concerned because they did not realize who Jesus was. They were, did not realize that Messiah had come. They did not realize that they had put him on a cross and crucified the king of glory. They were blinded to it, and he preached the gospel, and his desire was for the, for the scales, if you will, to fall off of the Jewish eye. Hallelujah. Amen. But God... Because he came to his own, and the Bible says his own received him not, but to as many as received the, him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. In other words, he turned to the Gentiles. He turned to you, and he turned to me. Hallelujah. And he provided a way that we could be grafted into the vine. Hallelujah. And grafted into the promises of God Almighty. Hallelujah. We are not our own today. We are bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. We can therefore glorify God in these mortal bodies because God has chosen you and God has ordained you and God has brought you and I out of captivity into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. He wants to show off his, his glory in our lives. He wants to show off his power. He wants to show off his majesty. The reason I bring this up is because sometimes we want to do things, but the Spirit says no. Paul wanted to go to Asia, but the Spirit said no. Thank God he listened to the leading of the Spirit. Amen. I want you to know. Every time that you get an intuition or you think that you get a revelation, it's not necessarily of God. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the most misused phrases of our day is God told me. No amens on that. Well, God told me, Pastor. Oh, did he? You know what I like to say when people say that? What did he say? Well, you know. No, I don't know. What, what did he say? Well, you know when they say God told me? God told me to leave the church, Pastor. Oh, he did? And if you question him a little bit,
It really wasn't God doing the talking. Hello. It was the flesh doing the talking. Because somebody, well, I'm not even going to go there. All right, let me finish preaching. You'll get the message in a minute. <clears throat> the presence of the Lord and the spirit of the Holy Ghost is all the same thing. When I talk about the presence of God or the Holy Ghost or the spirit of God, I'm talking about the same thing. Amen. Yet we have seen people do not always sense the presence of God when God is present. God is present in this room even now. I'll say it again. God is present in this room even now. Some can feel his presence and some cannot. Amen. But nevertheless, God is here. I can say that with confidence because the scripture teaches me that God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. God is in your car. God is on your job. God is in the park. God is in the church. There's no place that you can go that God is not there. So I can say with confidence today that God is very much present in this house this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people can come to church and get a tremendous blessing. Woo, hallelujah. Dance all over the church. Run the aisles. Speak in tongues for an hour. And other people can come to the same church service and sit there and say, what are they all excited about? But the one that yielded himself to the spirit of God will go home blessed and saying, surely the presence of the Lord was in the house today. But the unbeliever the cold, the lukewarm, and the indifferent will walk out of the same church service and say, I didn't feel a thing. That does not mean that God was not there. What that means is they were plugged in to what God was doing. And I've come to tell the church today that if we want to have things different in 2020 and if we want to walk in the power of the Lord and we want the authority of God to operate in our lives, we must get plugged in to the leading of the Spirit of God. I cannot just come and patty cake for Jesus, but I've got to worship Him. I've got to pray. Him. I've got to glorify him. I've got to say, I don't care what the rest of them do. I have come to the house of God, and I'm going to give God everything. I'm going to give him my best. I'm going to sing this song to Zion. I'm going to clap my hands. I'm going to shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. too long ago I preached a message about the nudging of the Holy Ghost hallelujah amen God will sometimes nudge us or compel us amen an example would be sorry I got to catch my breath. Amen. Hallelujah. But an example would be that you may be laid in bed about 3 o'clock in the morning and God wakes you up 
and whispers in your ear, get up and pray. And you look at your watch and you say, surely, Lord, you don't even get up at this time. <laughs> Amen. God, you can't be serious. Are you awake at 3 o'clock in the morning? And the flesh says, roll over and go back to sleep. You can get up at 8 and pray. Because God surely awake at 8 if he's awake at 3. Hello? So he nudges you. But you'll never realize what he really wanted if you resist the nudging of the spirit. Another example could be you could be in Walmart and perhaps you overhear somebody talking about a sickness in their body. Well, you know the great physician. And the Lord says, I want you to go pray for them. Who, me? Where's Pastor Overton? What's Pastor's number? You don't know how many people call me to go pray for people. What's wrong with you laying hands? He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name you shall cast out devils. In my name you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You don't need to call me. You just need to obey God. You need to lay hands on them and say, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus, arise. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Praise God. We need to follow the leading of the Spirit. And so, in following the leading of the Spirit, <coughs> excuse me, we get, <coughs> I take some of that prayer this week. Amen. Praise God. But in following the leading of the Spirit, we can be both objectively and subjectively. Objectively is an adverb, and it is, what does that mean, objectively? Well, what it means is not to be influenced by our personal feelings or opinions. Amen. Amen. If the Lord tells me to do something, I need not to let my feelings and my personal opinion get in the way. Hello? Amen. As I just said to us, sometimes we say, not now, God. Who? Me, God? You know, I, I, I'm not a holy Joe. I can't do this. And, I, and we begin to make all kinds of excuses. Amen. But if we're objective, we realize that the power doesn't come from us. The power comes from God. Amen. All God is looking for. Some of you are praying for God to use you. And he's trying to use you. And he's nudging you to pray for somebody. And you're saying no. How is he ever going to use you if you keep telling him no? You got to bring your flesh into subjection to the spirit. Subjectively, it's also an adverb, and it talks about our personal feelings, our personal taste, or our personal opinions. And oftentimes... The things that we have been taught from childhood up oftentimes gets in our way or gets in our opinion of what we do for God. Amen. Well, I was taught that it was the pastor's job to do that. Well, that's not what the Bible says. 
I don't care who taught it. I don't care what anybody else says. We just need to open the word and let the word be the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I got to get my personal feelings out of the way. Oh, I'm tired tonight. God, I don't feel like praying for that. I don't feel like worshiping you tonight, God. I, I'm, I, I, you know, I got 101 excuses of why I can't worship and why I can't come to church and why I can't pray for the sick and why I, why I can't do all this stuff. But I want to be used of you, God. I'm preaching this morning. Somebody say amen. I'm encouraging myself in the Lord is what I'm doing. Because some of you can't wait till I'm done. Amen. Amen. The truth is today that God does move upon us and that God is with us and we are the children of God. Hallelujah. So if God nudges me, I need to listen to the nudging. I need to be obedient to the voice of God. I need to be obedient to the leading of God. And I need to say, yea, Lord, here I am. Not my will, but thine be done. I submit to you, God, wherever you want me to go, I'm going to go and whatever you want me to do I'm going to do it I may not be the best at it but I'm going to do whatever it is you have given me to do hallelujah the Bible tells us that we have hope we have hope in God Our hope is not in ourselves. Our hope is not in our abilities. Our hope isn't in our intellect. Our hope is in God. Hallelujah. I can't save you. I can't heal you. I can't do anything for you. I'm simply one that I ask God to let me be a vessel that he can let his power move through. That if I become obedient to his voice, he said, lay hands on the sick and pray the prayer of faith and the Lord will raise them up. I have to obey the command of God I can't heal you I wish I could hallelujah but it's God that does the healing it's not by my might and it's not by my power but it's by his spirit saith the Lord hallelujah devil you're a liar there needs to be a Holy Ghost boldness come over the church of the living God that we begin to be the army that God has called us to be And I need to start with saying, God, bring my mind into captivity. Bring my thoughts into captivity to the obedience of you. Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, I think. Bring your thoughts. Bring your mind. Let Christ be in you. Hallelujah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We've got hope not because of who we are. We've got hope because of who he is. Amen. 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 The trouble is we all want to be right. Somebody has a problem, and they'll go and ask their neighbor, what do you think about this, Brother Cap? Well, Brother Cap's got an opinion. Brother Palmer, what do you think? Brother Palmer's got an opinion. My wife, what do you think? My wife's got an opinion. And probably, chances are, none of these three opinions are alike. So what do I do now? So I make up my own opinion. Well, my, my opinion is just as good as theirs. So I'm going to do what I want to do. The scripture says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. If you and I always do what we want to do, we're going to end up in the grave without a hope in God. We have got to come 
to a realization this morning that there is a higher authority over us. I said there's a higher authority over us. If I am going to be led, that means I have to become a follower. If I want him to lead me beside the still waters, I must be willing to follow his leading. I will never get to the still waters if I don't follow the leading of the Lord. I must have faith that his ways are higher than my ways. I must trust him that he will not let any bad thing happen to me. Hallelujah. He said, hallelujah. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord doesn't want bad stuff to happen to his kids. But he wants to lead you out of the hands of the, of the snares of the devil. He wants to lead you away from temptation. He wants to deliver you from sickness and death. Hallelujah. Every good and perfect gift cometh down from my Father above. He wants to lead us into blessing. He wants to lead us into relationship. He wants to lead us into power. But our problem almost always is our pride. Proverbs 16 and 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. The moment I start arguing with God is the moment I let pride take over my life. And sometimes we seek the praise of people more than we seek the praise of our Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 I'll say that again. Sometimes we seek the praise of people more than we seek the praise of our Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll let you think about that on your own. As I said in chapter 16 of Acts, Paul and Silas were forbidden by the Holy Ghost to go speak the word in Asia. Now that almost seems like a contradiction there. Because Jesus' command to the disciples was, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And here, the Holy Ghost forbid Paul and Silas from going to Asia and preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. I don't pretend to have the answer, but I trust the word that Paul and Silas did the right thing. I simply want to say this. Not every manifestation of God's presence is exactly the same. God loves to show up in unpredictable ways. And when he does this, he challenges our faith. Amen. Praise God. He appeared to Moses in a burning bush. He appeared to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a fiery furnace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He appeared to Israel in a pillar of, of a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So God manifests his ways to us in a lot of different ways to get our attention. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And not every man, you can't say, well, God only answers this way or God only answers that way. That's not scriptural this morning. Right. Hallelujah. God ha is, is free 
to show himself however he pleases. So we come to the house of God and our prayer is, Father, use me. I want to be used for the kingdom. So the Lord tells you to go talk to the pastor. And the pastor says, go scrub the toilets. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. That was not the form of ministry I thought he had. Well, pastor, you got to let me preach. Everybody wants to be the preacher. Well, uh, <coughs> but you got to learn to be a good follower. Before you become a good leader. We forget. Lord I'll go. Where you want me to go. I'll do. What you want me to do. I just want to be used of you. And then when we don't get used. The way we think we should be used. We get an attitude. Pastor, you're just not in tune with it anymore. You're getting old and, you know, you just don't have it anymore. Well, maybe. Mm -hmm. But I want to give you, in closing, a way to make good decisions for your life. First of all, there's always an authority over us. We cannot be led if we don't have an authority figure over us. Without saying God is our authority, we have no problem with saying that. But the word also tells us that he has set up authorities over us. Next to God is his word. God will never tell you to do something that is contrary to his word. I don't care what kind of revelation you have. I don't care what kind of prophecy you want to profess. If it's contrary to this, this stands. And then, he set up other authorities over us. He set up human authorities over us. Amen. One of the very first things that God established was the family. Adam and Eve in the garden. And Adam was given authority over the wife. That's not popular today. But nevertheless, the man is the authority if there's a man in the picture. God also established the church. The church is an authority figure in your life. <laughs> so when you all get ready to move to North Carolina... The very first appointment you ought to make is an appointment with me. Because I am watching for your spiritual soul. I'll just tell you up front, it's not God's will for you to move anywhere there's not a good church. And your definition of a church and my definition of a church may not be the same thing. Don't like that, do you? 
Because you go and you talk to everybody else, but I'm the last one. You come and tell me what you're going to do. If I'm your authority, you're not to go tell me what you're going to do. You're to come and ask me. Oh, hallelujah. It's not that I want to be Lord over you. It's not that I want anything bad to happen to you. But I am the watchman on the wall for your spiritual soul. And when you stand before God at judgment, you know who's going to stand next to you? Me. And I, your blood, is going to be required at my hand. And I am going to have to give an account for what I told you and what I didn't tell you. So I'm that mean old pastor. So I'm telling you, so the blood ain't required at my hand. Now you can go do whatever you want. I can't stop you. But you know what happens? Most of you go do what you want. You wish <laughs> you, wish you had listened. I was a prodigal son, too. I went out, I did what I wanted, but guess where I am? I'm back in the house of God. By his mercy, by his grace, and I'm so thankful that I am. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I just want you to know, not only is the pastor an authority, but your, your boss on your job is an authority figure. You need to be the best employee on your job that your employer has ever seen. If you're representing the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to represent the Lord Jesus Christ well. The government is an authority figure. Amen. It doesn't matter who's in the White House or whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent. Amen. God sets them up and God takes them down and we have to obey the laws of the land. And if you don't like it, you ought to get on your hands and knees and pray. I'm not here to get political. I'm just here telling you it's a good thing to pray for the leaders of our country. And as you well know, they need it now. But if I'm going to be led by God, the blessings of God are going to be mine. He said the joy of the Lord would be my strength. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. If I walk with him, if I talk with him, if I stay under him, hallelujah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I can have joy when all hell comes against me. I can have joy when the devil himself comes up against me. Why? Because I'm in the presence of Jehovah, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that no thing weapon for against me is going to prosper hallelujah that God is on my side there be more that be for me than they be against me so I can shout and I can praise him and I can glorify him because the joy of the Lord is my strength the fear of the Lord the Bible says is the beginning of knowledge and that fear doesn't mean that I'm afraid of God. It means I'm in awe of him. I'm amazed at him. I'm astonished at him. So fear is a blessing from God that I'm in awe of what God can do. I'm amazed at his power. I'm amazed at his benefits. Amen. I fear him. I love him. I lift him up. Healing is a benefit. The Bible says in Luke 5, 17, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. It is God's will that we be whole. It is God's will that we be healed. It's God's will that he demonstrates his power in our lives. <laughs> if I'm led of him, prayer is my weapon. Acts 1 and 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and in supplication. On the day of Pentecost, they were in 
one mind and one accord. And suddenly a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. When the church comes to worship and the church gets in one mind and the church gets in one accord, the presence of God is going to show up. The manifestations of God are going to show up. And the revelation of God is going to show up. If I'm led of the Lord, judgment is a blessing in my life. The story of Ananias and Sapphira, when they lied to the Holy Ghost and God struck them dead, it, it produced fear in all the new believers that were there. Hallelujah. Judgment begins, the Bible says, at the house of the Lord. Judgment's your friend. You know, some of you say, oh, I can't do this in that church, and I can't do that in that church, and I can't do something else in that church. But judgment is your friend. Because judgment will keep you from the pit of hell. Praise God. Another blessing when we're led by God is our praise. Amen. Praise. Is a weapon of your warfare. When the devil starts attacking, you start praising God. Jesus said that if we didn't praise him, he was going to cause the rocks and the mountains to cry out. Because he created us to praise him. When the church will come on any given day and we will begin to praise him and we will begin to worship him and we will begin to magnify him, we will begin to create a climate where the Holy Ghost can begin to move and there will be signs and there will be wonders and there will be a demonstration of the power of God. God is just waiting for the church to get in one mind and for the church to get in one accord. Hallelujah. Bind the spirits of judgmentalism. Bind the spirits. Amen. Hallelujah. Procrastination. Bind every evil and ungodly spirit in the name of Jesus. Declare the liberty of the Lord. Declare one mind. Declare one purpose. And declare that God is God above all and in all and through us all. Let's get along with one another. Let's love one another. Let's let uh, not division separate us but let's come together that God might be glorified and that God might show up <laughs> amen you can't hate your brother and go to heaven and lastly let's come with an expectancy that God is going to do Something marvelous in our midst. Hallelujah. Romans 5 says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Hallelujah. If we come expecting God. Hello? If we come expecting God to show up. If I come expecting God to deliver. If I had come expecting God to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. If I come expecting to see somebody baptized in Jesus' name. If I come with an expectation, it opens the door for a manifestation of the presence and the power of God. Because he said, according to your faith, so be it unto you. You got to believe that he'll do what he said he'll do. Do you believe it today? Do you want to be led by the Spirit? Do you want the Spirit to lead you in the paths of righteousness? Do you want to walk by the river of living water? 
If you do, stand to your feet. Lift your hands. Let's give God some praise this morning. Let's magnify him. Lord, use us today for your glory. Use us for your kingdom. Use us for your power. Hallelujah. Help me to be in one mind and one accord with what you want to do in this last day. Use me to be a witness. Hallelujah. I love you today, God. I praise you today. Why don't you step out from where you're at? Come down to this altar. Make a declaration to God this morning. God, here am I. I want to be used of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. The Lord is here. Will you seek after him a couple of minutes and say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. That's it. Come on. Lift your voices to him. Lift your hands to him. Have your way in my heart, God. Have your way in my soul today, God. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory today, God. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my transgressions. Help me to be more like you. I love you, Jesus. Come on, tell him how much you love him today. Begin to worship him. Begin to thank him. Thank you for his blessings. Thank you for his love. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his grace. staff find somebody to pray with pray one for another this morning in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Lord have your way bless my brother today bless my sister today let your anointing be upon them let your presence be real in their life in the name of Jesus, have your way in me, Lord. Cleanse me, wash me, purge me, create in me a clean heart. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I need you, God. Come on, cry out to him. I need you, God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way today, God. 